Hello, welcome to Mark's Garage. This is my Wilson lathe. The viewer asked me to show some screw cutting specifically on this machine because he has the same mach machine which is I believe slightly lighter badged as an ensign. Uh, so this is particularly for one viewer. I'm just going to show some simple screw cutting. This is a piece of 5 8 bar. This is a half inch nut, a wheel nut. Okay, so I'm going to put a thread on there to take that nut. I will talk it through for anybody that has no experience and I'll kind of try and use generic terms also for people with other lathes. This is a half inch 20 American, you know, SAE thread, UNF thread, half inch 20. So the first thing you would do, you would consult your um, threads per inch chart and then find out where it says 20. There it says 20. On this machine, you can see the two levers there. So I need this one leaning that way, this one leaning this way, and then this one here to the left is feed and to the right is screw cutting. So let's say that I'm ready to do the screw cutting. This needs to be engaged here in line with that, which it already is, but just to show you, you know, I'll sort of take it down here and I'll bring it back. So you get that in line with that. That's solidly engaged there. So that's lined with that. Those are like that. And then this would be down there like that. This lathe has this um, screw cutting gearbox. Some lathes don't have that. And what you have in that case is a selection of gears and you have to look at a chart and select which gears go on to give you the right ratio. Right now though, I'm going to actually do some turning. So I'll put that there. On this machine, this needs to be that way for um, coming in this direction. And the other important thing is so you're going back to the screw cutting. This needs to be engaged on English there. Like that. That's English and that's metric. This one has 125 teeth on it. And this one has 127 teeth on it. When you're screw cutting, you need to set this up here. This is the screw cutting dial indicator. And this is the lever. Up is disengaged, down is engaged. You also need to have this lever, this piece, set in the middle like that. So, because that is for feed when you're feeding that way, and that is for feed when you're feeding that way, but you have to have both of those locked out and set in the middle like that. I'm going to do a little bit of turning first just to get that down to 0.5 let's do a bit of turning uh, a good channel to watch for turning and things like that is John Mills double boost he does a lot of good turning work and before I press the button to start I check that my chuck key is safely in the rack and not in the chuck. Okay. Seems to be magnetic. Point four nine nine five. That ain't bad, is it? Really, half a thou. Just going to put a chamfer on there. A generous chamfer. Oh, 
what you need to do, you need to go down to the base diameter of your threads. Let's try this. Let's try this. Or I could look it up. Maybe I should look it up. 0.449. Hmm. Gone under a bit, I think. Yeah, 0.445, so I'm a couple of thou under, but that's okay. This is a 60 degree thread cutting insert, which is good for metric threads and uh, UNF. So that goes in there. I need to set the compound over to um, no, no, nominal 30 degrees, but it's actually more like 29 and a half degrees. Now when it says 29 degrees, it's 29 degrees from there, so it's actually like 60 degrees from on these markings. So I'll do it. it the, 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 the markings more or less run out to be honest. So there's my markings, zero is round there, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, that's 55, 58, 59, 60, and I've just gone a, a, a tiny bit beyond that, so I'm just going to give it a little bump. Can you see it's just beyond the 60 mark? It isn't quite at the halfway, but that's all right. It's just shy of 30, what would be 30 degrees, coming the other way. So I'll tighten it up at that. When you do the cut, you go in along the flank of the thread, so you're only cutting on the one face, and that half degree error just touches the other face. That is what I would say is parallel. That's what I would say flat against, maybe it ain't actually, let's have a look. Yeah, I think it is. Double check that it hasn't moved, which it doesn't appear to have. So I'll, I've put the lathe onto the slowest speed, which is AF. I've moved that lathe over to screw cutting. Double check that that's in the 20. Double check that these are in the right position. Double check that that's on English. Move this this way, like that. Okay, so now when I... Now when I engage this lever, there, it's going that way. So I'll disengage it. This is the um, dial thing. And what you do, you, you rotate this, and that brings that piece around there. Can you see that this is moving? So you can engage it when that's aligned like that, and disengage it. So I will bring my tool sort of in contention there. That's just taking a very gentle touch. Okay, I think I can engage on any one of these things. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to engage. Now, the tool will cut along. I'll hold the camera here, but I'm reaching down with my right hand to the lever, because I need to Disengage there. Okay. Okay. Because I'm filming rather than doing the job for real, I, I, I've missed out a few things. But we have we have sort of done a test cut there with a thread on it. So I'm going to stop the lathe while I kind of regroup. 
First of all, what I need to do is set this to zero. So I'm going to set this to zero. So I'm steadying this one, turning that one. That's on zero. Bear in mind, there's, there's a very slight cut on there, but it doesn't matter. And I'm going to hold this still, set that to zero as well, which is there, I believe. Yeah, that's zero. I'm going to wind this one out like that. This is disengaged. I'm going to wind the table back, wind the carriage back. And what you always do at this point is get a thread gauge. So that's engaged in there. And you can see that it's engaged from one end to the other. I'm just clearing the thing. I'm coming back to zero on there. This is on zero. So I'm just going to put five thou on. I'm, I might get ten thou actually. That's ten thou, which you can do like a bigger cut early on because you're only taking a tiny bit. Okay, I'm going to wait for a thing to come round. I'm going to try it on anyone. In. Yeah, that's a line, so that's good. The problem is, when you get a few chips on there, you can't see it very well. So you leave your cut on there, then you bring this one back, like that. Come out. Come back to zero. Give it a bit more of a cut. I'll give it another tenth there. Waiting for this to come round. Because I'm going so slow, this is taking a long time. When this comes round, I engage the lever. There. Now you can see it's a heavier cut now. Anyway. Right, I've got to keep my wits about me and pull the lever now. Right. So what I'll do, I'll bring your hand held for the next one. I thought I was filming then and um, I wasn't, unfortunately. I took a couple of cuts but I'll just talk you through it. I'll do a spring pass at the same setting. I'm getting it in contention there. Bring in the cross slide to zero. I'm not putting a cut on this time. I'm waiting for the thing to come round. The indicator and I'm engaging now. I'm sticking some oil on as well. It's a bit awkward as you get more and more uh, chips building up because it's hard to see when you come to the end. There. There's the end. Okay. I'll disengage the lever. Bring the cross slide out, come back, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to try the nut now. So there's the nut, that goes on. If it wasn't too critical that would be okay, but it is actually a bit loose. I should have stopped sooner. I can't remember now, there's a formula for working out how deep you need to go in. If that wasn't a critical job, that would be okay. There's just a little bit of roughness on the top of the threads. I'll show you a, an alternate method, which is what you have to do if you are cutting metric threads on an English lathe or English threads on a metric lathe. You get in contention like that.
You have to have a line that stops well. You put your cut on. Engage. You can't see it, but I'm, I'm reaching up for the stop lever. You get to the end, instead of pulling the lever, you stop the machine. Like that. You wind this out and you then start the machine in reverse. And let it wind back. You don't disengage this. You get to the end. And you stop the machine. You bring this back to zero. You put your cut on, whatever it might be. You start the machine in the forward direction. It's still engaged, it's travelling already. Bear in mind, I'm just pretending now. I'm reaching up for the lever. Stop the machine there. It's ever so easy to overrun. Wind it off. Start the machine in reverse. Let it wind back. Stop the machine. So there you have it, a really crap thread. <laughs> oh god. I had a request to show some screw cutting. So what I've done there is I've showed you two different methods. Um, I did cut some threads successfully using this method um, recently and it worked well. And this would have worked well if I'd have been more mindful about how de deep I needed to go. I'm a bit annoyed with myself really, maybe I'll try and do a better one. <laughs>